So we probably have to wait a bit and find where Dala is. Hello, hello. Does anyone has a spare keyboard by any chance? You know, these external Mac keyboards, which are so nice to the fingers. And I have all the keys we need in Blender. I don't really need it, it just helps. Can you plug it here, yeah? Yeah. Do you mind doing it? I hope so. If I find the mind support. This one? Maybe? Okay. Okay. Uh, we have any... Do you have some water? What do you need? Some kale for this sour? Okay, I find one. Is the VG only... VG sounds worse, no? Okay, it might work. So, everything is okay? Yeah, I think so. You have half an hour. Yeah, I, I can even try to make it shorter if you want. Okay, try to finish about 25 minutes after 2, okay? Okay, 24 for some questions. Maybe, okay. yeah. Super. Perfect, thank you very much. Hello, good, uh, good afternoon everyone. Yay! Yay! Applause, applause. Um, I hope you all had a great lunch. Sandwiches are really good, the salmon in particular. This is more like an informal presentation because the whole idea was not to just talk about the multi-view stereo 3D feature we're gonna be presenting here, but actually show a little bit of a demo of how do you go from a regular file all the way to your final 3D nice animation. And I want to try to make it short so there is room for questions because I believe there are a few questions. I know some people already are holding on some of them. So if you have any question within the demo, you can just wave your hand. I will try to stop and, and address that. And let's, let's do it. Uh, do we have internet here? Just out of curiosity. Uh, okay. We do, we might not do, we do have, okay. Yeah, we're gonna start, so just First things first, uh, my name is Dalai Felinto. I'm from Brazil, from Rio. And I presented last year a very similar talk on Multiview for Blender. And at that time, what I had was my own personal pet project, was a branch I started on my own. And I went over other developers to try to get the whole design approved. And I was working my free time, it was very exciting. But at some point, we had a more solid design that required a lot of time to be to be tackled. So I let it I left it aside for a little bit, was doing other projects, and then Tom uh, contacted me saying that the Blender Foundation would be interested in having these wrapped up for the upcoming Blender. In this case to Blender 2.73. So what you see here, if you compare to the last uh last year presentation, and now now it's what they have is a current official uh, ev uh, edition of Multiview. So you can download these on the official Blender branch. There's a Multiview branch that's gonna be merged any soon. 
So things changed if you tried last year, but what you have here is very close to final, if not the final. I'm going to start just quickly showing the documentation here, just briefly. So this is, just wait for the mouse to, okay. Just a, uh, just a small overview of what is involved on Mootville. So I, I'm going to redo a little bit of this demo I have online, which is a five minutes of taking an existing file. In this case, it's the Creature Factor 2. It's a training material from the Blender Foundation, Blender Institute that's on the Blender Cloud. Going to get there. And it takes from the original file to what you see here is as an anaglyph, but could also be as a top bottom or side by side or interlace, any kind of 3D output. We also mention here, we're talking all the time about multi view is stereo 3D. Okay? So what happens is that stereo 3D is, a, is included in, in multi view. Multi view means if you have an auto stereo display, an holographic display, which requires 200 images as an input. You can still use the Blender or this branch to automatically generate all your files, but the special niche case you're going to be tackling here is a stereo. When you only have two views, you have a 3D display, because even if you're working on one of these devices, you want to be able to visualize in 3D all the time. So when I mean visualize in 3D, and before we get to Blender, just overview here, I mean that you should be able to see things on the, on the viewport as a, it's in 3D. I don't know if you can see because of the light, but here they have the classic uh, CN, uh, red and CN 3D mode. You should be able to have your, your camera setting sets that you can just play with the eye separation, with how far do you want the objects to pop up in your face. You want to be able to preview in the viewport your stereo layout. So where's your, how does each of the individual cameras per se, how each eye perceive the scene, where is the interception, what's only perceived by one eye, what is not. So we can change these parameters with a real-time feedback. And we also are talking about supporting pretty much, uh, I'd say, all of the standard 3D displays that you can find in the industry. We don't support auto stereo displays because there's no standard yet. You know, we can find Panasonic might have one, Sony might have another one. And the advice I got, uh, I think last year, was to wait for LG, and Samsung or LG and Philips to take over the market, wait for them to come up with a standard, and then we support that, so still waiting. But so now we can have one window of anaglyph, one window of 3D, and when talking about uh, stereo 3D, it's not only about rendering two images, it's about a pipeline. So we're gonna be showing here how, does the, how is the viewport integrated with the compositor, integrated with the sequencer, integrated with the OpenGL preview render, which is an essential part of the movie making pipeline. How does it integrate with outputting images for a preview, for the final editing? And this is an example of an output format. These are the left eye. We saw the anaglyph, but can also have these different formats. Uh, this now, this is just the documentation. Okay, let's go to the, let's get started. Uh, just here, just if you want to redo this at home, especially if people watch on the streaming or watching in the future, hello future. <laughs> you can go to the training on the Blender Cloud if you're a subscriber. Just this, where, this is the hub where the current Blender training and documentation material is all being hosted. And you can go to the fantastic work, it's going to take some time to load so you can keep speaking, about Andy Gorrache. <laughs> That's over there. He actually got out, see. He did the Creatures Factor quite some time ago, and now he redid, especially for the, for the cloud. And just, you're gonna get a zip file, I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit. Go to Blender, just so you know, this is gonna be, you go over here. So we're gonna take, we have the Creature, Turntable, and the backup file, in case everything fails, it's here. So let's get started. So just to be clear, this is a blender as your blender, but is a, it was built from a branch, it's the multi-view branch, you get to see here. It's official, it's on the official blender, uh, blender servers, and it's gonna be merged in Blender uh, quite soon. And before going to the more funky file, let's go over the new functions here. Just hold on, there's something, it, I hate this. All right. The f one, first, one button we have that controls all the settings is the views buttons. On the moment that you turn this button on, your scene changes entirely. 
I think it's a little bit, is it too dark, the screen? Uh, okay, oh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, I will do this step and actually I'm going to split the screen. So here, you're gonna see through the camera and this without the camera. So just by turning views on, you by default, you get this plane here. Do you see this plane on, in front of the camera? I'm gonna make it more visible, especially for this, yeah. Okay, you see this plane over there, the dark one? And you have here on the, through the camera, you already see in 3D. So, well, so the moment you turn this on, you have a few other options in Blender, including this stereoscopy panel on the viewport, including a few camera stereoscopy settings, including the option to change your 3D mode for your whole window, and for compulsory and secrets as well. So in this case, just a quick uh, example. I was talk um, here's the setting for the camera. I can play, you know, if I have one camera, but internally it's treated as two cameras, so I can play with the call, so-called eye separation. But if, if you're using ortho stereo, meaning if you have a scene that's one-to-one -one mapped to your real perception, you want to use the real eye separation, but sometimes your scene is in a different scale. Sometimes you, having, you are in a scene like the darling, I shrink, the children, that movie where you have the little ants and, and the insects. So you, you want to play with the scale of the scene. So this is, uh, we give the artistic freedom for pl people to play with. And also have what we call the converse plan. So I'm changing here. I'm moving the, this option here on the right part of the UI. And the plan on the viewport is changing. So if you have been to a 3D movie in the cinema, sometimes the objects, they pop out of the screen. This plan represents the screen. So we have a real-time preview of your screen, of your depth layout. Just you can change a little bit. Uh, just in this simple case, before going to the more complex file, I recommend also turn your own volume. Volume. Can you see there? You can see here's a bit tint red, and here a little bit tint uh, blue. So here is more blue, and here is more red. This is the two individual cameras. So for instance, I'm gonna exaggerate and gonna increase the separation between the cameras. And what we are drawing here is actually the first one of the individual cameras being generated. It is really important for 3D movie making because some things you want, you want to make sure are seen by both eyes all together. There's a, there's a few rule, rule of thumbs in 3D movie making and one of them is you don't want any fast coming object very saturated, very bright, coming in the so-called positive space, so in your face. So in this case, uh, let's go to the here, top view. In this case, you, you wouldn't want any object here, nor here. Can you see there the drawing? Yeah. You want most of your action uh, happening here. On the negative space, is not so bad. And again, I'm not here to teach uh, 3D movie making. There are a few books on that regard but we're to present the tools you can use when you find the pipeline that fits your needs. And the other thing we have, it's not so useful, but it's nice to see, is the cameras. So I'm gonna increase this even further. Now the distance is gonna be five Blender units. And if I turn on plan and volumes, you see there two cameras here, okay? More than that, so, so far, if you can see my camera is actually here on what you call the left pivot. So the second camera, if I change the distance between them, you know, it's only increasing into one direction. Okay. This is the most common method because a lot of the time you made a whole production in 2D. You have the left render of your scene and now you want to render the right eye. So in that sense, you don't want to change both eyes. You want to change only one eye on top of that. Both, both if you're for some reason creating a project from, from scratch, you can change the pivot to be the, la the right one. So this is the left, this is the right or the center one. Just an example of the functionality we have built in. Uh, this is also something worth noticing that this is what we call the off-x stereo mode, you can see here, and it's explained in the documentation, but also support different methods, such as parallel, where the cameras do not converge to the plane. We have toy in which is barely useful, barely used those days, but it's there for a reason, and why not? 
And yeah, that's what came here. So let's open the, oh, let's just render. Yeah. And then you open the real file, which you won't be able to render because it's too big. So here, you see the file. Let me increase here to make it more visible to, I'm going to increase the eye separation so it's more easier to see the dis difference between the left and the right. Okay, you see here, you're also seeing a xanaglyph again. Can you dim the light a little bit further, please? You see a xanaglyph, do you? Oh, I do, yeah. Uh, there are other modes to see the 3D, and that's something important. Even though you're seeing in, in anaglyph, the data is not in anaglyph. You're keeping the data as they were originally rendered. So just by simply turning off the 3D mode, this button here on the UV, you get to see the individual views. So in this case, I'm looking at the left view. I could also look at the right view. Yep. So that means that the 3D representation of the image is not tied to the image data itself. It also means you can change from anaglyph to interlace. Can you see that's interlaced? You can see to column interlace and, and checkboard interlace. And there's a few like top bottom and side by side, which I'm gonna show in, in full screen. So for instance, if I'm in full screen mode, and I, do, I have a shortcut for the full screen, and then you have a left to right full screen, fully integrated, they're slightly different, and yeah. Just a small parenthesis here, this is a full screen mode that's new to Blender. You see no headers, no side panels, no anything. Just this little icon here that shows up when you mouse over there. So just, oh, uh, it's gonna be here. So it's just a mode that was made especially for multi-view, but also used elsewhere. Okay, let's open a real file. I'm going back to anaglyph mode here. And let's go to creature factor, creature, turntable. So this is the file just as it comes from the Blender Cloud. I think Andy made a great job on this file. It's very clean and also the render is really good. So as I said, you just go here, you go to the render panel, to the layer panel and turn on views. And just by doing that, you already, you already get to see in 3D. I'm gonna increase here just to be more evident, but you see this red and cyan ghosting, you already have a 3D view here. And just as for the simple cube, if I go outside of the camera view, uh, let me remove a bunch of the things, that, oh sorry, a bunch of the things that are going on here. So I'm gonna put display only rendered, remove this, okay. I don't know, because I want the camera. Okay, so if you take the camera here, nope, if the camera here, sorry. The camera here, and once again, I mean, and once again, we turn on the stereo, which we play with the stereo plan. Do you see the plan over there? Uh, it's here, in front of the camera, okay? I'm gonna use this view to help setting this up. Yep. So now I'm going back to the, to the camera, and on the camera panel, just as we did for the cube, just gonna start changing the plan distance. Because I know that for this file, I might want the, the, only the tail of the T-Rex to pop out. So I'm just changing the color a little bit. Dark gray, you can see there, yep. And here I also want to, yep. I want to move a few frames just to rotate the T-Rex. I think it looks better in this position here. And I'm gonna bring the plan back in, okay? So in the viewport we get to preview the, uh, the result. Sometimes when you work with 3D, you don't, you don't really want to use glasses all the time or to use a 3D display. So it's quite common, for instance, to, to, to use the interlace mode. I'm gonna change now to interlace. Where if you see, especially here, you see the, the separation here. The difference between what is the left and the right eye. And same to the foreground. Here you can see the difference. So even without, without glasses, you can already have a feel of how much depth you're producing. So this is the same effect if you're in a 3D movie, you take out your glasses. So sometimes you can say that the things are so farther apart that it is producing more or less depth. Depth. Okay, now I'm gonna render, but this is a very heavy file. I'm gonna change 
samples to five samples. And I'm going to change the resolution to 25%. It's going to be fine. And just render. Okay. I change back to Anaglyph and. Um, okay, it didn't break. Why it render? I can show the. Um, oh, any questions so far? One question here. What's the question? And I'm going to repeat. Also. Did I also implement the quad buffer view? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, it doesn't work on my computer because I don't have a quadro card. But it's here. It's called time sequential mode, I think. I, I had a report that it doesn't work on some computers. So I still would like to double test. Maybe if, do you have a computer with quad buffering? I love you testing it and getting back and forth and see if it works or not. We're using the same method that the Blender game, the game engine uses. So I would expect to, to work just as well. So here you have the image. It's a bit, you know, noisy for some reason because you did only five samples. Uh, but once again, we have the left and right. What I want to show here is when you try to save the image, you also have a different options here. We call view formats. So we can either save then, I'm going to create here a new, a new render folder. Yeah. We can either save then as left and right or individual images, so it's going to be Blender Conf. If I save this and try to open back, I actually save the left and right image separately. So remember, I was telling how the view display, the view mode is not tied to the image data. That's what you get. You can also save. As uh, anaglyph, or I'll say side by side squeezed frame. Why not? Uh, B conf side by side. Okay. Oh, I can see everything. There you go. I save the image. Go to full screen again. Okay. Now, what happens if I want to load the image I just saved? So out, out, O to load the image. I go here. Have my images. And that's the side by side. So I just open it. That, oops, that doesn't look very 3D, okay? But here, you also have a new panel, stereoscopy, where you can say, oh, this image is actually a stereo 3D image of side by side, unsqueezed or squeezed. So now the image that was in an entirely different format that you can just get from the internet or whatever, now is actually is displayed. Once again, with the individual views, the left and right view, or in the 3D mode. You might have noticed, uh, you can also see these when you're importing, you can choose here right away. Just as an example, I'm going to load a better render because it is really low resolution. So it's going to be this one, creature factor, side by side, unsqueezed, and it's going to look fantastic. So it's a full render with left and right, and remember the image, and you saw the image, I can show you again. The image originally was like this. So that's where, what you're talking about pipeline. Um, being entirely honest, there's not a lot more to say, and that's the beauty of the system. They try to make something that works as you would expect in Blender. So for instance, if you go to the compositor, go to the node editor, compositor, remove background for a bit. Uh, I'm going to remove everything here. Yeah. Going to add a new image node. Or I could just drag and drop. I'm going to open a new image. I could just take one of the preloaded images, but I'm going to load one of the existing ones. I'm going to take this time the, the top bottom squeezed. Squeezed. Okay. So here you already see the image unsqueezed on the background as well. Let me rescale the background. Uh, here, fit. Okay. So the background is also in anaglyph. Let's fit again. Okay. So again, the image was, you know, two images or were side by side, were top bottom, but it just works as an image. And now if you take here, I'm going to also have to add a uh, compositor output, plug this in. If I just render this, it's going to render a part of the image because the Blender has a different size. But again, 
the compositor automatically knows that, hey, this scene is multi-view, so let's first render the left eye, let's then render the right eye, and, and so forth and on. And you can even do changes per, uh, per eye. So let's say I want, for whatever reason, you want to change the left eye and, and, and differently than the left eye. So I'm going to add a new node here. Let's call the filter, not filter, the converter, all the way on the bot, view switch. View switch node, I'm going to plug here, and I'm going to plug this here as well, and I'm going to plug this here. Okay. So what we are doing here is just telling Blender that whenever we want to render the left image, it goes to this buffer, whenever we render the right image, it goes to this buffer. And I mean, it might be complicated, but it's documented at least. And here, just change the effect here, change the color. So for the right image, okay. So what I'm doing here for the right, the right image, I'm mixing with red. The left image, I'm mixing with green. Let's see this in the full screen mode. Yeah, it's easier to see. So we can have different treatments for the individual views. But most of the time, you won't need this because most of the time, you just have to plug everything. I think that was pretty. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, we're kind of short in time because we're short in time. So I'm just going to quickly show some images while you can come up with a nice and smart question to be answered. Please. <laughs> uh, yes, I can, but it actually might trigger epilepsy on some people, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, a formal disclaimer, don't worry. This is an example of a different image the agent Tom was telling about. It's, so the doctor epilepsy mode, uh, okay, here, so if you're watching these from home, just don't watch for, 10 seconds if you have epilepsy. No, I'm not kidding. Some people have epilepsy. Okay. So this is what the epilepsy does. Uh, no. <laughs> it basically, it basically uh, try to render left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right. So even if you don't have a 3D display, you can get a depth feeling for that. Okay. If you have epilepsy, you can Watch again. Thank you. It might not go to the official release because it's, but it was fun to code. We are really coming close, coming to closing, Monica. Yes, just a quick question. Yes, um, do you know if this is a, uh, can be applied also to a dome uh, uh, render and projection? That's a good question. It's a bit of a niche question. I actually, st um, Yes and no. In, so that's a quick answer. And the long answer is yes, but it still needs to have some work on top of this. And actually, uh, the, way, the reason I started the multi-view project, because I wanted the stereo 3D for DOM rendering, and just realized that the only way of having this in Blender was to have a whole multi-view pipeline, and then have this also included on top of it, so people would be more so accepting of the work. That means that the multi-view will have a DOM render Button. It will have uh, a it will have for the fish eye camera and cycles, not necessarily a dome three D view and the viewport. That's something else. But it also it also helps for this kind of things or Oculus Rift or or cave real time editing within Blender. Cool. Any more questions? I think we're really close on ending here. So, oh, so please let's make it the last one, short. Please. It's the last one. I'm going to be here for the whole conference. I have another talk tomorrow at four, at four, four, uh, four thirty. We've been able to say about mission control uh, with drones with Blender. I also recommend you to come. Please. Just a short question. So we can answer. When will be integrated to the main Blender branch? When? Yes. Oh, when? Uh, hopefully by Blender 2.73, we 
meaning last night I finished the sequencer working. I didn't show here, but sequencer can also preview this, this strip in 3D and render. There are a few bugs, so I'm going back home, I'm going to wrap this up, send for review, and then I'm going to coordinate with the other developers. So we are aiming at 2.73. Michael Alt is really short question because we're really running out of time. Uh, are you also planning to do it uh, for the um, standard viewport so that we can do modeling in stereo because I... Oh, that, that's, uh, it's there already. I mean, it's on this branch, you just, as long as the scene is treated as a stereo, you can just need a 3D display and you're already seeing in 3D as long as you're watching uh, through, viewing through the camera. Okay. Okay, but, but it will stay like that, that I have to be watching through the camera. You have to be watching through the camera. Maybe you can change that if you see a strong use, use case. I don't think people are really going to be sculpting in 3D, honestly, but I, I might be wrong. I think it makes sense uh, because you have a by far better deep uh, impression. It might, but anyways, this is, it's very yeah. easy to turn it on. It just was a design uh, decision. Uh, well, thanks everyone for coming. And And for interest on Blender Game Engine, I have a. Okay, thank you. There is time for next speaker. Thank you very much. Sorry for kicking us, no? I'm amazed. Oh. What, what's the name of the branch? Mota. Multiview. Multi oh, Multiview. Oh, okay. Yeah, I might have to check it out. I don't have a GitHub where I keep the most uh, cutting edge. Yeah. But the main developer official is most.